Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the crazy file sizes when shooting 4K footage with the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. Now, one of the problems that most people are having is the sheer file sizes that come from this camera. And the reason for that is that it shoots what's called MJPEG as a codec. It's a fairly antiquated codec that produces, uh, I think it's 500 megabit per second files, which means that you're going to end up with really, really large um, files for minimal kind of seconds and minutes. The reason they've done this, I think Canon explained, was to be able to pull decent stills from 4K footage. Um, the reason for that is when you're shooting an MJPEG, that each file, each frame of a 30 frame per second uh, video shoot will be a, a separate photo. So it's like shooting um, on an 8 megapixel camera at 30 frames a second for half an hour. You'll end up with a bunch of absolutely huge file sizes. And yes, you can, if you're shooting with a fast shutter speed, you can actually pull very good stills and frame grabs from 4K footage. But for most people, if you're trying to film a wedding or a commercial or anything like that, you're going to end up with seriously massive file sizes. And it's not just the fact that the file sizes are big. The codec is so um, out of touch with modern computers that, you know, I'm finding it hard. I've got a very powerful computer. It's 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I think it's a GTX 980, um, 4 gigabytes of RAM uh, video card and an i7 20 core or uh, 8 core processor or something it's it's a very powerful computer have no problem with anything else um, but with these files i i did find an issue um, it jutters i can't find the, the can't get the playback to work properly and if i bring in the vlc player here let's have a quick look at the actual codec information uh, on this file this is shot at 4k on the 5d mark 4 and you can see here that it's uh, decoded it's a 422 um, scale and motion JPEG video um, and with this particular file if I bring it over you can see here that for a 35 second clip it produces a 2.2 gigabyte file it's crazy you know that's absolutely astronomical it's, it's ridiculous so if you're filming for 35 minutes or an hour you're gonna end up with some huge file sizes so one workaround is for people to actually transcode it into maybe ProRes or another uh, more usable codec um, but one thing I've found that I can do using either Sony Vegas Pro 13 or 14 is to create proxy files. But before I do that, if I actually show you how this runs on VLC Media Player, if I click, click play with this file loaded, it pretty much doesn't play it. It's jolting all over the place, uh, not smooth at all. I'm even lucky that this is moving along, along the timeline because normally it stutters and just doesn't do anything. So you can see there, I can't review files very well uh, using VLC Media Player certainly won't play with the Windows Media Player so what I need to do is actually go into Sony Vegas I'm going to use Pro 14 but like I said it works with Pro 13 as well and I'm going to import that file in so let's bring that into here and then drag it onto the timeline and I'll set the project video settings to match so now you can see I've got 4096 by 2160 that's the 4k file I'm going to set this to loop so when I play um, you know I can just let it loop but I'm currently in, let's go to best full. So this is the best replay quality, which is, I know it's not going to play at all. But if I start trying to play that, you can see absolutely jolting all over the place, not doing very much at all. You certainly can't work nicely with your footage uh, using that. So if I switch even down to the worst, let's go to draft auto. Worst quality and set it playing. And you can see it's still really, really jittery. So it's a pain to actually try and edit with this. It's not going to happen. It's a, it's a real pain. But the quickest workaround that I've found using either Sony Vegas 13 or 14 is to right click on the actual clip itself and go to create video proxy. And you can see down here it's creating a video proxy. So for this 35 second clip, it'll be interesting to see how long it takes uh, to actually create that. So I'm going to time it. We were on four. 2418 when it started. I'll let that get to 100% and we'll see how long that takes. Okay, so that took about 2 minutes and 10 seconds to create the proxy file, and you can see here it's created it and it's only 108 megabytes. So it's a it's a much much smaller size than the actual uh the file we've got up here of 2.2 gigabytes. Um so that should be a lot easier to work on now. So if I now go back to the clip and let's go to uh, yeah you can only play back in up to preview full anything higher than that and it won't really play back very well so if I just show you this uh, we're on preview full and we've just created the proxy so it's now running from that if 
I click play it's running smooth as butter uh, no jittering no jolting the only movement you can see there is the wind hitting the, the wind hitting the uh, the spider web so you can see by creating a proxy file for each clip you can work on that file and if you even if you close Vegas and open it back up again as long as this proxy file is always in uh, next to the actual file itself then your editing is always going to be really smooth so if I actually go to draft full it's it's quicker obviously you've got a, a less quality image but if I was to go to best and full you can see it still jolts in fact even if I go to good full you still don't get that smooth uh, movement if I go to good half you still don't get it it's got to be preview full uh, and then it goes back to being really smooth now to be honest preview full is absolutely fine there's no reason to actually see it any higher um, so for editing that's what I'd recommend with the 5D Mark IV um, if you've got some software that will actually do proxy editing whether it's Vegas Pro 13 or Vegas Pro 14 or um, maybe Premiere Pro then obviously just create proxy files work on those and that's a pretty good workaround for these humongous file sizes now obviously it'd be much better if uh, Canon would do a firmware upgrade to actually be able to produce much smaller file sizes not sure if they're going to do that but for now that's pretty much the only workaround and for you know two minutes 20 seconds to actually um, create a proxy file for a 30 second clip isn't bad considering it'll take a lot longer to actually transcode it in something like ProRes so you know for me that's the only workaround I've got at the moment um, and also for, for short stock clips it's something I can live with but if I was doing weddings or much bigger productions I'm not sure if it's something I'd really want to do and I didn't buy the 5D Mark IV as a full video camera so I hope that helps I hope it helps you just to get uh, as a, a short workaround uh, for editing the 4k files from the 5d mark 4